uh oh, it was it's dark here, right? Yes. Um, and just to kind of remind us the important piece of this work. Um, we understood last time from trauma-informed care, we learned a little bit about trauma, how it impacts our health, how it impacts our bodies, how we um, can learn how to change our lens when we see others to go from not what's wrong with a person, but what, what happened to a person, right? And so <clears throat> this part of the series is going to even teach you a little bit more about how to take care of you because you are important in this work in the sense that you have to be aware, you have to have self-awareness and be aware of where you show up. So you know how to support others, but you more so know where your temperament is so you can be moving further in the work and be okay, mind, body, and spirit for yourself. So we're gonna be self-care and I just stop me through it. Um, I'm, I know that there's only a few of us on here, so I'm going to be mindful of our time. Uh, your time is, is very important, and I am aware that today is a day full of different things that are going on. So I just want to help you to just know what things may support you along the journey. So we're going to ask that you please mute your screen unless you have a question or you want to participate um, by making a comment. Uh, feel free uh, to raise your hand. Um, and, you know, in the chat to, to let us know that you have something that you would like to say and be prepared for a survey at the end, because what you say helps us to know a lot about how to improve workshops, how to make them more engaging and how to help you feel like you're getting everything out of it that you need. <clears throat> so how are you feeling today? So we're going to start off and our icebreaker today is going to just Take a time to look and tell us, like, where are you on the scale today, one to five? Um, how are you feeling? Uh, and I know last time what we did is we asked you to use an adjective to from your first name and then, you know, something that made you smile. This time I want you to just talk about one self-care practice that you already have in the works that you do on your own. One thing that you do to help yourself calm down, to remain in a good place, to fill your cup up, or to take care of your physical, mental, or spiritual health? What would you say that one thing is that you've practiced in the last seven days? So I'll start it off just because I think it's always important to start what you're asking others to do. Um, so I would say on this scale right now, I'm probably at a one. Uh, a lot of times I can be at a two. I can be nervous right before uh, I do a presentation, but I'm a one because I'm comfortable with you all. Uh, number one, I, I've done it uh, last week for you. And so I feel comfortable with the group that I'm speaking to today. Uh, and so I feel happy and calm and satisfied at this point. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, so I would say I'm a one. I hope to stay a one through the whole thing. Uh, and the one self-care practice that I have done that is my favorite thing to do uh, is my spiritual bath. Uh, and my spiritual bath is just an eclectic thing that I've picked up over the years that, and it's not spiritual in the sense of like religious, spiritual in the sense of that I use the elements of the world in terms of, the, of life that help in terms of air, water, fire, and earth. And it's about just making sure I'm in balance. Uh, I normally listen to sounds of nature when I take uh, my bath, or maybe jazz, something without words that can help me be in a meditative state that I can take some deep breaths while I'm also uh, in my bath. I make sure I use aromatherapy products, and that's the earth. I have candles lit, that's the fire. And of course, I'm in a tub of water, that's the water. <laughs> so these things kind of help you to be able to balance because a lot of times people don't think about um, how we utilize things help rejuvenate us and bring us back. Uh, and so I typically enjoy putting bath salts in the water. So like pink Himalayan salt, a lot of people also know about Epsom salt. Uh, that has been a, a thing of many years being used. Sea salt and mineral salt, all of those are really great because salt actually helps preserve your skin, helps to detox uh, your body and helps to even uh, relax your muscles. So just a little bit of my self-care practice that I do typically every Sunday. Um, and it helps to rejuvenate me for the week. So I'll turn it over. Anybody else want to go next? 
I'll go next. Um, I am at a 1.5. Okay. Um, 1.5. So I'm making one up. I'm, uh, it's the end of the day. Had a good day. Uh, you know, you do good. Um, and serve others. So good day. Uh, just tired, a little bit tired. And be honest with you, I, I, I've realized they, whenever I'm having my last, less than human moments this week, the clock spring forward and I'm, I still have not adjusted to that. So uh, that's, that's where I'm at. So self-care, uh, I guess my three things are go-to. I Number one, uh, every single day I carry a rock with me uh, and I keep the rock in my pocket and or uh, in, in, in my bag. And uh, it just reminds me, it grounds me, uh, it reminds me to stop, put things on pause. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer, so I stop and pray, uh, just, uh, think about uh, something I'm grateful for, uh, you know, just, you know, just count my blessings. So that's one, or, or when I get into difficult times, remember that I can persevere and, uh, it's only temporary. We'll continue to push through. Uh, second thing I'm going to share real quick. Uh, you were talking about apps earlier. We were talking about apps before the call started. Um, one of the apps that I use is relaxation meditation. Um, it's free. Uh, I love it. Um, I, cause it's not guided. Uh, it's just sounds of nature. So, uh, everybody, well, a lot of people have a happy place. Um, my happy place usually involves water, um, you know, whether it be rain or waves and, uh, this, this app has been really good just to kind of help me get centered and grounded. And number three, um, I don't know if it's self-care, uh, on a positive or negative side, uh, but I like tacos. <laughs> I like a good meal. I think it can right. be very positive. <laughs> right. I, I don't think tacos are a bad thing unless, you, you know, I guess if you can consume them in moderation, things. but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, no, I just, I like uh, trying new foods uh, and um, enjoying a good meal. And, and I guess it's just doing it in a mindful manner, not like rushing to scarf something down, but really sitting and enjoying um, you know, the moment, the people that I'm with, that I'm able to break bread with, uh, the flavor palette. Um, yeah, just, just really enjoying that moment. So, uh, yeah, that's me. And yeah, thank you. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. See, we learn more by others lived experience. I think it's always crucial and important for people to share, right? Because there are just things that you don't think about that people share that they teach you, right? I like the whole rock thing and, and something that holds you down and, and makes you feel grounded. I haven't heard that one before. So it's always important, I think, to hear the voices in the audience um, because this is a community learning thing. This is not one person being greater than another. This is all of us teaching each other how to be healthier and how to be better. Um, and, you know, our health is our wealth and we have to be wealthy together, you know, and we learn from each other. So thank you for sharing that. I'll keep that in mind, a rock in your pocket. I normally, I've heard of crystals, but I haven't done the rock yet. So thank you for that one. Okay, next. Uh, I guess uh, you're talking about crystals and I guess the rock will be something like a crystal because yeah. the rock will, um, will remind you and will keep you, like he said, grounded. I never tried that before. Right. That is I haven't either. That's why I say I learn from people all the time. I love this part of it. <laughs> this is one of I my used, favorite parts of the self-care piece. <laughs> and I have used crystals in the past. I haven't used crystals lately. I have used crystals in the past. And um, that's interesting that you guys are talking about that because I might uh, start using them again. Okay. Me grounded. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like a one, but then when I start reading, I'm a bit annoyed with the rain because okay. I wasn't able to walk today to school and, you know, come back to school because it's been raining. Okay. So I'm a bit annoyed, but I'm like, hey, it's OK, but I'm in a one. OK, yeah. All right. Thank you for um, sharing. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Uh, I am a believer, too, and I, um, I, I get up early in the morning just to um, spend time with the Lord. I read my devotionals, I read my Bible. And through the day, that is something that, um, that I also tried, but I like the rug, the idea of the rug. So to hold it during the time that I'm, you know, praying or, but during the day, I try to remember to pray. You know, every time I go use the restroom, I said, thank you, God, I'm doing well. 
Um, thank you for everything that you give me. And when I arrive to work, that's the same thing that I do. I say, thank you, Lord. I made it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I always, and I ask him, please make me aware. Keep me aware. I always, that's one of the things that I really have uh, clung to, to the Lord. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's awesome. I think prayer is important. I think a lot of times we always talk about mind um, in terms of mental. And we think about body in terms of physical Mm -hmm. Well, what are we doing spiritually, right? Because mm -hmm. I always, I always feel like we are a spirit having a human experience, right? That's right. And sometimes we get so consumed with the physicality of what, how we live and the physicals of what we do that we forget that we are spiritual beings first within and the ex external experience we're having is the human experience which is physical and so it's important I believe to take care of your inner you mm -hmm. and whatever your your version of that take care is whether it's prayer whether it's meditation whether it is you know just grounding yourself with crystals or rocks or however you reconnect to that inner part of you that guides you that gives you great wisdom that inspires you. Um, I think that is so crucial, important to us being passionate individuals and having hope in times where a lot of times we see a lot of hopelessness around us. So all of those things, I think, just really kind of add to the mind, body, and spirit experience that it's we're more than just mind and body. We are spirit too. So yeah, that's excellent. Um, Ted, I know uh, you didn't want to, but would you share too? <laughs> Just so we at least get, you know, four in the room. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, so the question was, what we do for self-care? Yes. First, like, where uh, are you on? How are you feeling today? And then your self-care practice. Yeah. Uh, so today, probably at a, at a two. Someone was feeling one or two, like one and a half, I guess. Uh, just a lot of stuff going on, man. Too much, you know. I had a uh, almost lost. I realized about myself that I am a stress eater. I literally <laughs> yesterday I was passing a place I used to go for ice cream. I was telling myself, "You're like, you know what? I've been acting a fool in this pandemic. I ain't gonna do it today, just because I'm over here." <laughs> and as I'm pulling up next to it, I get a call from uh, <laughs> this company from last year. Right. I had last year I had raccoons in my in my attic. <laughs> right. I did everything I could to get these raccoons out. Finally got them out. Got put on the payment plan because it was super expensive. Oh. Passing by this ice cream place, I get a call. I answer and say hello. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this is Janine from Wildlife <laughs> Center. We just called to let you know. Uh we're about to send you to collections. I was like, er, excuse me, what? <laughs> I immediately hopped into the ice cream line. I, I already knew what it was about to be. I already knew. I didn't even drove to the back, got in line. They were like, yeah, you know, we had your card on file. I was like, yeah, I've been paying. Was like, yeah, it declined back in June of 2020. I was like, so no correspondence? I was like, so what's, what's, the, end, what's the end of the numbers? And she read them off. And I was like, okay, and what's the expiration date? And she read it off. I was like, that's correct. That's the exact card that I'm about to buy this ice cream with that y'all didn't put me into this line for because y'all are stressing me out. She was like, well, you know, I just got here two months ago. They just handed me a stack and said, you know, these people were behind. I was like, okay, that's fine. I was like, yeah, sure. Sign me up for the $98 or whatever a month that I was paying to, you know, to get the, the raccoons out. They were like, yeah, about that. So because it's been close to a year to two years, we're going to have to double that. And then in that moment, I turned to the window. I was like, yeah, can you make mine an extra large? <laughs> put all the sprinkles, put all the sprinkles on there. Because I knew I was going to need something to make me feel good. Uh, I know all about that. I know all about that, Ted. I do. Unfortunately. Frustrated. <laughs> it definitely is. It's definitely, I'm so sorry to happen. Hey man, the, hey, the ice cream was good though. I, I guess I needed it. Or I knew I was gonna need it. One of the two. <laughs> it worked out either way. But I'm sorry that they bothered you to get you to that space because you was getting ready to pass it up. You had almost passed it. Hey, <laughs> find my willpower deep in my pocket, try to pull it out, and they said, "No, go and put that back. Go get this ice cream." 
That's, 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 you know, sometimes you win. Yep. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes, I lost. You, sometimes you didn't lose. You just took a light hiatus for a moment, as we all do sometimes. But you'll be back in the <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. okay we'll see. If I, if I pass by, if I pass by ice cream place today, you know, I can't make any guarantee because I'm still mad from yesterday. So. <laughs> still recovering. <laughs> still recovering. I got to. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing. At least you know, and those are real things. Thank you for sharing that, Ted. Because sometimes you know, the people don't tell the whole story, and so it's good to know that there are things that do put us in a space where we may make some choices that we may not always be the proudest that we've made in that moment, but it's always each one day, we just get another day to try it again. We just keep trying until we make the choices we are proud of that we are happy with, you know? And I don't think that that was necessarily a totally bad choice, you know, but I do know what it's like to struggle with trying to make all the better choices to improve my health and wellness. And that not always happen because of a little stress and came into my life unexpectedly, unexpectedly. Yeah. Well, it put me in a better place. It put me in a better place because it, it helped me reconnect with the self-care thing that I used to do yeah. that I didn't do anymore, which was, uh, so recently I bought an alarm clock because I heard waking up to like, so this alarm clock basically does kind of like what you and Gary, like it does sounds of nature to wake you up. And then, yeah. and uh, uh, it's a, it's called the sun clock. So I what it does it is, good. yeah. So when it's right before it's about the time for you to wake up, it'll start to illuminate. And like the closer and closer it gets to your time, the brighter and brighter it gets in the room. And then, it, you know, you get birds and stuff chirping. So her is supposed to be better than, you know, the alarm blaring in your, yeah, your it ear. Is. It doesn't give you a shock. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like you already missed something, right? <laughs> right. So, um, but it has a radio on it. And so yesterday, I guess I was just still caught up in, you know, how I was feeling, feeling down. And I went and I, you know, I went and listened to the radio for the first time with nothing on, just like took me back to my like teenage years where I didn't have a choice mm -hmm. on what I was listening to, you know, mm -hmm. unless I had or bought the tape or the CD, mm -hmm. but just let it play, you know, and they had like the old, uh, what was it, they used to come on, like Midnight Love or whatever. Yeah, like Doc Winters and all of that. Doc Winters, yeah, yeah. exactly. You yeah. know, it had a little yeah. bit of static in the back and it was cool. It's just, you know, <laughs> nice little way to chill out. All right. <laughs> See, we find a way to make one, don't we? <laughs> we definitely do. Okay, next slide. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. Um, we all have some great tactics that kind of help us. So just to kind of go over a little bit of Alive and Well communities, uh, remember, we are all about elevating community wisdom. And all of us on here have our own set of experiences that have been lived and well um, <laughs> documented in our own brains as good, bad, or indifferent, but they are things that we've learned, uh, some of our best, um, you know, lessons in our lives, and we are able to share them with one another to learn from one another, and so it's about elevating our community wisdom that we have among ourselves, uh, especially centered around trauma, self-care, and community care, and then disrupting systemic oppression um, and responding to the impact of historical trauma and how it may come down on a lot of us over time that has been handed down from family members and people we've loved generations before that have given it to us. And so we can be able to identify it and know how to put self-care practices in place to take better care of ourselves and make sure that our health is on point. Uh, acting with urgency, not waiting for another day or a generation, right? We're not gonna say we are gonna put off tomorrow what we can do today, okay? Uh, and leading innovative solutions based on the science of trauma, toxic stress, and resilience. So I think that all of us have, you know, been in a space where we can say we've experienced stress before. Um, maybe not always trauma, but definitely some stress in our lives. And the good thing is all of us working together, talking together, uh, processing together gives us a space of having more tools in our toolbox to know how to improve our health over time. So this is self-care is the best care. And I also call it our health is our wealth. Because uh, a lot of times we think, you know, especially on the day of stimulus payments, that, uh, you know, the wealth is the finance. Uh, and finances are great. That is a healthier part. You know, it's great to have a healthy financial life. 
But I think the best uh, wealth is when you have a healthy body, healthy mind and a healthy spirit, right? And so that is our true wealth, right? Because if you have all the money in the world, but your mind is not in a place to have you feel good or your body's not in a place to help you feel good or even your spirit may be misaligned. Like we've seen a lot probably in the news lately with a lot of people that don't seem to take ownership of morals and values and that bothers us, right? We see that as not wealthy, no matter how wealthy they are, um, when your morals are misaligned and people don't see that that's on level, sometimes that can also look unhealthy, right? So our health is our wealth and self-care is our best care. Next. <clears throat> so the key takeaways we want you to understand is an understanding of self-awareness. So all of us being aware of where we are an understanding of self-regulation, knowing how to bring ourselves back when we're not a one, but we're a four or five on that scale, we were looking at how do we bring ourselves back down to a one or two so we can be in a space to process and even work through what we're dealing with at that moment. Uh, an understanding of self-care is what this is about and healthy self-care tools, which we've talked about a few this, this more, uh, afternoon or this evening. We've talked about, you know, uh, spiritual baths. We've talked about having crystals or great rocks to ground us or having prayer or sometimes even sneaking away for that favorite treat when it's hard to kind of deal with what's going on around us. Sometimes that is okay or using an alarm clock that wakes us up in a kind and gentle way versus a blaring uh, <laughs> uh, awareness that it's time to get up and, and get ready for work. So having a self-care plan also helps us to be prepared to know how to better uh, prepare our bodies, our minds, and our spirits to thrive when we do have stress into our lives. Next slide. <clears throat> do you ever experience stress? Do any of you ever experience stress? I know Ted gave us an example of when he has experienced stress. Would you say that there has ever been a time that you've experienced stress uh, in the last two weeks, let's just say? I would say I can honestly say yes, because um, I just completed um, turning in my first draft of my dissertation. And uh, on top of that, then working a full-time job and on top of that, teaching three classes at a university uh, on, on the side of also taking care of an 88 year old mom. So I could say, yes, I deal with a lot of stress, but I also can say that I have worked very hard to make sure I'm doing self-care practices to help me balance so I can kind of stay somewhat above float in that process. So does anybody else have any experiences of experiencing stress in the last couple of weeks? I would say yes, um, uh, every day. Uh, there's, there are um, difficult challenges that come up, uh, you know, um, obviously through, through professionally, through work, personally as a husband and a father, um, you know, and other relationships in, in, in our lives. Uh, yes, there's definitely stress um, just in the way that I think or respond to certain things. Um, so yeah, most definitely. Okay, thank you for sharing. <clears throat> yeah, I have to agree with you on there's different levels of stress and depending on where you are. So you, I have to deal in a certain way and I just have to like, well, you know, calm myself down and just tackle one thing at a time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And some I, things I have to let go and some things I'm like, like my daughter, I'm like, hey, this is yours, you take care of it. Definitely. Yeah, go for it. Yep, absolutely. Like, well, you know, like paying, paying uh, bills, you know, I have to just do what I can do and just make a plan. That's correct. But That's correct. Um, yes, there is all I guess within the stress, there's different levels of stress, and it's just how to tackle the stress. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, I think there is, we're going to go to the next slide. <laughs> there are different levels to stress, like you just said, Ms. Bella. There are different levels in the sense that it helps you to kind of know where you are. And again, we're talking about self-awareness, um, but there is positive stress. And a lot of times you don't think about that there is positive stress. Because when you ask people, are you stressed? They're like, oh, no, I don't experience stress. I don't have stress. We all experience stress on some level, but there are different degrees to the stress. I guess you could say different levels to the stress. Um, there's positive stress. We talked about this last week. And the positive stress 
is when it's just a mild increase in the heart rate, right? So even if, you know, we um, are excited about getting, you know, some extra money in our bank account, right? Uh, the, the stress may be like, what do I save? What do I spend? You know, um, what do I decide to invest? Whatever the case may be, that may be your stressor just trying to figure out and process how you're going to utilize your money, right? Whereas in tolerable stress, we may talk about someone in a car accident was one that we used last week, but we could also use losing a loved one, uh, someone that was in their late um, 80s or 90s you know, years old. We expected that this is from natural causes and it's still hard to see somebody that we love leave. But the thing is we kind of can expect it and it's tolerable if we have the right supports in place and we've made peace with a situation and we're in a space to kind of work through it um, because we are doing self-care practices ourselves. But then we have toxic stress. Now that's when we have one thing after another, right? And so maybe the money that we had in the extra account, maybe that money had to be spent on things we didn't expect, right? And so that was taken out automatically. Then we had someone that we care about a die and then there was a car accident and then there so you're having one thing after another happening and you're not getting time to process or work through any of it and you may not have support systems in place then it starts to feel more toxic right and so we have to kind of know what level of stress we're experiencing is it mild you know is it a positive thing that's really mild that we can work through in no time at all a couple hours uh, a good app on our phone or listening to some sounds of music or having a prayer can bring us back pretty quickly or are we in a space where it's tolerable where we may need some supports like talking to a family member that we love a lot or somebody that we can talk to about anything or a spouse or a mate uh, or is it in the toxic space where we feel like we don't have anyone to turn to or no, no supports in place to help through that process when we know where we are then we can know how we need to show up with our self-care and, and being aware of it. definition. So compassion is a feeling of deep empathy and respect for another who is stricken by misfortune and the strong desire to actively do something about it. Okay, the human quality of understanding the suffering of others paired with a desire to help alleviate it. And I probably would say because of the work that we do, all of us, we are very compassionate individuals, right? We do a lot of work around supporting children and families and community. So that would be our level of compassion, right? And so when you're talking about compassion satisfaction, that's the positive feeling we get when we realize that the compassion we put into working with others is resulting in some positive change such as relief, growth, or healing. My question would be, how many of us on here feel like the work that we do brings compassion satisfaction on some level. Okay. I would definitely say I see compassion satisfaction in the work that I do. Okay, thank you. I see you, Mr. Spiller. Um, and that is probably what keeps us going in this work, right? But all of the things that we're looking at and when we're talking about compassion and compassion satisfaction, if it becomes a whole lot, it may take a different turn. So we have to be aware again of, you know, if the work is becoming overwhelming, are we having the right supports in place? Those kind of things help us to be aware of where we're going. Next slide. Because there's a such thing as compassion fatigue, right? And that's when you start getting to a level where you feel like fatigue, emotional distress, or apathy resulting from the constant demands of caring for others. That means you are doing and doing and you don't feel like we talked about this kind of before our um, session began. And that's kind of like when you have everybody coming to you, knocking on your door, asking for something, needing support. They see you as the rock and everybody comes to you for a resolution, a solution or a support. And it can wear you thin to a place where you start feeling compassion fatigue, where it's harder for you to connect and care because you're overwhelmed from caring for so many people, your cup might be becoming empty. Okay, next slide. So vicarious trauma is secondary trauma. So that's us working with families and children every day or community every day, 
And what we're seeing in others is now starting to trickle into us. We're starting to feel a little bit of what we see in everyone else. It's, it's making us more fatigued and it's making us be aware that it's overwhelming dealing with everyone else's um, support, you know, problems and, and stress and toxic stress that's going on. And it starts to kind of come our direction. So it could be post-traumatic stress disorder behaviors and emotions resulting from internalizing the traumatizing events experienced by another. So someone talking through their problems that they have had or their trauma, traumatic events that they've experienced, and it comes in your direction so much, like maybe you're talking to students over and over again that have had experiences of being homeless or not being hungry or not having the basic needs being met. And you're seeing it day in and day out. And after a while, it really starts to wear on you uh, and impact you because of what you're seeing every day. That is a very real thing that happens and it's called vicarious trauma. We have to be aware of that as well. Next slide. So burnout. How many of us have ever been burnt out before? I know I have. I mean, I've had jobs that they have um, had you going and going and going and going and you feel no space um, in your life to even catch your breath really, right? And where you can't catch your breath, you can't catch up. And when you can't catch up, you start to feel like you're not impactful in the work or that you're not making an impact in what you're doing. And a lot of times people can start feeling burnt out from doing so much and starting to feel like they're getting so little in return to either happen on behalf of helping others or that you're not being appreciated or, or physically and emotionally, you are exhausted from doing all the work that you do for others. So that's another one you have to really be aware of. You have to pay attention to yourself and where you feel like you are based on the work that you're doing and how you're starting to respond in situations. Because if you're noticing yourself becoming a little bit more short-tempered pretty easily, or you're not as happy-go-lucky as you normally are with problem solving or helping others, you have to kind of take a temperature check to see where you are so it's not going in a burnout state. Next slide. So here we go again with the trauma and toxic stress on the body. How does this show up? And we talked about this before uh, in our trauma-informed class. Uh, we talked about how chronic trauma and toxic stress damage the body, right? So the same system that was supposed to save you if it keeps going without any recourse, it starts to hurt you, right? What started to save you, if it constantly goes without shutting off and without having a, a reset or a, a time to, to downsize and, and not be in that space anymore, what you find is it revs up and it starts to affect your physical health. And how does that look? That means, you know, you have your hormones, uh, your cortisol coursing through the body all the time, increased heart rate all the time, uh, blood sugar uh, on, you know, constantly going through the body, that has not created a space for your body to come back to normal. And so by it constantly running that way, it starts to damage your body versus helping heal it or to help you survive in a situation. Next slide. So changing the question, we talk about this all the time, not from what's wrong with you, but to what happened to you. What happened? Um, we all know that things happen. And when things happen, people respond a certain way and show up a certain way based on what things they've experienced versus just seeing what's wrong with them. Okay, next slide. So what about you? Let's go. What is self-awareness? Well, it's what we know about ourselves when we're getting to our boiling point. Whether that boiling point is because of mental where we are mentally, where we are physically. When we're physically exhausted, we find ourselves just being lethargic, maybe not having a lot of energy, maybe not being able to be as sharp and show up for people, you know, where we're usually pretty quick on our feet, quick with it. We may not be that at that point. Um, we may find ourselves just not being able to do a lot because physically we're exhausted. Mentally, when we're exhausted, we do the same thing. We don't answer our questions as well. We may not be able to come converse with people on the level that we normally are intellectually. It may be that we're at a space that we feel depressed and we don't want to get out of bed. 
or we're anxious and we can't calm down and go to sleep. We have to know where we are to, in order to know what we need, right? You won't know what you need until you know where you are. Um, behaviorally, how we are showing up. When you're happy, you want everybody in the world to feel that happiness. You want to support people, encourage people, go out and support in a way that everybody can be impacted in a positive way. But then when it's the opposite, right? When you're not feeling that great, you might snap on somebody sometimes, you know, you don't even know where it came from. You know, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come at you like that. I, I've just been under a lot of stress lately and I, I apologize. So you have to kind of know where you are emotionally and behaviorally and pay attention to those signs that you're getting so you know how to show up in your cool and relaxed stage or when you may be going to a boiling stage and need to bring yourself back a little bit. Next slide. What is self-regulation? Well, it's kind of like my grandma used to say, you know, um, when you ask her how she's doing, she said, I'm fair to midland, right? I'm not too high, I'm not too low, I'm right in the middle. So what do we do to keep ourselves right in the middle? And I'm gonna ask you, like, what do you do when you feel yourself either going really high, like where you're ready to speak to people in a way that may not be of the most excellence or really low where you just don't engage at all or you may disconnect or um, even find yourself withdrawing from people. How do you get yourself right back there in the middle? You're not too high, you're not too low, you're right in the middle. I know for me, I will, allow myself to be put in my own personal emotional timeout um, where I may go and like you all talked about, say a prayer, read something positive for a while. Uh, I might find myself drinking a cup of tea, you know, and allowing myself to listen to some music that calms my spirit. That way I can take a reflection period and say, what is going on with me? What do I need to do to get myself back so I am a benefit not only for others, but for myself? right? Because how we treat people is everything. And how we show up for people is everything for us in our profession. And so I'm guessing that it's important for all of us to be aware of when we need to take a time out for ourselves and how to connect back and come back. Anybody else want to share? What do you do to keep yourself regulated in the middle? I, I kind of do the same thing when I feel like that, like I, I, when I need a break, I just see the gold and get, I, actually I go for walks in the building and I go to the restroom, take up five or 10 minutes and then go get some water. And then I walk the rest of the, I go, the bathroom is in the middle. So I make a left turn and I go all the way to the, to the end of one hallway to get to the restroom. Because at the same time, I'm doing my exercise and I'm clearing my mind and I'm clearing uh, my soul and then do on the way, do what I need to do and then come back and be ready to go for whatever I need for the day, for that time. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. I think uh, for me, um, to get regulated, I mean, it goes back to the thing I said right earlier. You know, um, often I just put my hands in my pocket. You know, this is here, all right. Um, I try to be where my two feet are. Uh, just be mindful, be present. Um, I know a lot of people say it, but I mean, you just have to breathe. Just breathe. You know, uh, just simply breathe. Um, you know, I may have a, a sip of tea or uh, water, or I mean, I know some people it's not good for you, but a soda, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but, you know, just something. Sometimes that, it's just uh, what you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just what you need. And, uh, but really, I, I try to uh, just be still and and breathe. Um, I know I was blessed with a great grandmother who always said, although the storm's going on all around you, don't let it get in you. Um, so just be still. So that's that's what I do. There's this one book that I read, it's called Stillness Speaks. Uh, and it talks about, you know, just being in a space of sometimes just being still is, is the answer. You know, we always look for answers that we think are going to make more sense, but just being still and allowing life to evolve, it, it tends to work itself out. We work it up, but it works itself out when we are still a lot of times. And so 
uh, stillness speaks speaks a lot about knowing how to be present, how to be patient, and just how to take good deep breaths and recognize life has been taking care of itself for millions of years, <laughs> way before us and way after us. And so sometimes us being still, things tend to just work themselves out. Okay, next slide. So the pillars of health. So here we go. So we got six that we talk about that help us stay balanced and regulated. Uh, and believe it or not, when any one of these are out of regulation, we tend to have a space where we can honestly uh, find ourselves kind of going down, right? So you're talking about your physical health, your emotional health, your social health, your spiritual health, your mental health, and your financial health, believe it or not. And a lot of what we see in our society today that causes a lot more stress and strain is really the financial health. Because uh, a lot of our people who we see that may be struggling or stressed, a lot of times it's through finances, right? Um, but also with this pandemic, you're talking about even emotional health uh, and mental health, you know? Because a lot of people being separated, not being able to hug, their grandchildren, not being able to see their grandparents, not being able to be around their children, uh, it can be very difficult or not being able to be around friends, especially if you've been used to being a very social creature, right? You're a social individual who really likes to connect with others and to be through a pandemic where connection is limited. It has been very, you know, very taxing on people's mind, body, and spirit again. So that social health has been impaired in some ways. And so Knowing where your regulation may need support is always crucial. And these are the areas that they talk about being the main ones for most humans. They, they just have a space where physically they could feel misaligned. It could be emotional, social, spiritual, mental, or financial. Next slide. What is self-care? Well, self-care is purposeful and intentional acts designed to help us recharge. It's purposeful and it's intentional. That means you're setting out for the purpose of self-care. It's not like, okay, I'm just gonna lay on this couch and watch TV until I go to sleep, right? That's not self-care. That's just us too tired to move basically, right? Or us just, <laughs> just trying to catch our breath per se. But self-care is all about the purpose of a recharge. I'm doing this to recharge because I know my cup is empty. I'm doing this to fill my cup because I know it's empty. So it's purposeful and intentional. So you're setting out to recharge purposely. Next slide. So what is not self-care? Well, we say it's not crashing on the couch, it's not shopping extensively, although a little shop therapy is good, right? <laughs> it's not drinking every day. Uh, unless you're drinking water, lots of it. <laughs> uh, it's not uh, using recreational substances for coping, right? And, and some people do like to drink a glass of wine with their dinner every day. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about the kind of drinking that this is the only way I can cope with the stress in my life, right? Uh, we want you to drink plenty of water, plenty of tea, and, you know, have an occasional soda, but we want you to be in a space of being conscientious of is this a coping mechanism or is this something that I'm just doing because I enjoy doing it? Or do I need to come up with a new intentional self-care act to support me because I'm feeling stressed? Next slide. What are the myths about self-care? Oh, it's too expensive. It takes too much time. It's selfish. It's something that takes from us. Self-care never takes from us, right? It's only there to add to us because because it's purposeful and it's intentional, you're really taking the time to put back in you, right? Uh, a lot of times I say um, to my team when I'm working with them, they're like, how do you always keep going to always support us or how to encourage us? And I say, because I have to do a lot of things to encourage me too, right? I can't encourage you until my cup is full. And so I have to read a lot of things or... I talk to people who inspire me and encourage me. Um, you can't do it all by yourself. You know, your cup has to be recharged as well or filled as well. So sometimes it's talking to the right people that mentor you, that encourage you, that support you, that listen to you. 
and so it's really about taking the time purposeful and intentionally to put back in you so you can be the vessel of change that you are signing up to be every day. You can be the change you wish to see in the world every day because you have taken time to fill your cup and now you can pour into others. Next slide. Why is self-care important? Oh, what well, we've been talking about, there's that cup, look at it and it's empty. <laughs> Not even a drop in it, even the drop down there and dry it up. <laughs> totally empty. And so we have to be purposefully and intentionally aware of how to fill our cups. So we are able, in the jobs that we have, we give to a lot of people with the families we have. We love our people. We love our children. We love our, our mates. We love our family members, our parents, our sisters and brothers, our best friends, our community partners, all of these people we care about. But we can't pour into them even if we aren't in a space where our cup is filled enough to even be able to give to anyone else. So we have to take care of ourselves. So we tell you, have any of you ever went on a plane before? Down the plane? And you know how when they go on the plane, they always, when the mask drops down, they talk about you have to put the mask on yourself before you help someone else. This is that same practice. You have to put the mask on yourself before you're able to help anyone else. Otherwise, you're trying to help someone else, you could lose yourself in that process. So we wanna make sure we're grounded and we've taken care of what we need so we're able to support others as well. Next slide. Where do I start? Well, we talked about it, being mindful. Mindfulness is being fully present in the moment. We're present in the moment right now. We're talking about self-care practices and we're present right now recognizing where we are how we feel what we think all of that is right there so mindfulness helps you to balance your emotions be fully present for yourself okay um carve out time and create space for yourself okay a lot of times we think we're doing it for others no we're doing it for us so we can be better when we work with others uh, or when we're there for others and make a decision of what works for you. Only you know what works for you. What works for Mr. Spiller may not work for Bella. What works for Bella may not work for Ted. What works for Ted may not work for Chris. So we have to be aware of what things we can utilize that people may share with us that we could adopt and what things may not ever be us because you know we're just not in that space yet. You know, next slide. So where do I start? Healthy self-care tools. Well, put pen to paper. Do you like to write? You know, sometimes journaling, there are so many journals out on Amazon and I'm like a journal junkie. I don't know. I haven't been in the last year, you know, since I've been writing and stuff. But before then I have probably about a good 20 journals and they're all different kinds of journals, self-care journals, uh, happiness journal, have a journal for um, you know finances and that journal way in the back too. <laughs> I have a journal for um, you know um, how to you know plan for your best self. There are all different kinds of journals. Uh, happiness journal. I think the thing is you have to find what works for you. Uh, some people just have a basic pad and paper and they just write and make their own thing up right have a dream journal like what are my dreams uh i think you should always dream don't think that it's just something for children right we tell the kids to what do you want to be when you grow up i think you constantly have to ask yourself michelle obama talked about becoming we're always still becoming right we we evolve each day we're constantly changing ourselves to meet a better version of ourselves somewhere down the road if we really stay in alignment and present with where and who we are. And so for me, it's constantly you reinvent yourself. Sometimes you're some in a space for 10 years and then you recognize that no longer works. So what am I gonna do next? So you have to start dreaming and reinventing again. You take yourself to a new level and that's how you keep yourself passionate about the work that you do is recognizing that sometimes you have to reinvent where you are and come up with something totally new. And then that's what excites you again about the work that you do and the life that you live is because you take time to reassess where you are, who you are, 
and what you want now in your life. What you want now in your life, you probably didn't want 25 years ago. You know, 25 years ago, you were fine with maybe going to McDonald's every week, right? Now you may be in a place in your life where you want to cook wholesome meals that are organic. And, you know, you may be in a whole different space. You want to walk everywhere you go versus drive, you know? It may be a whole different part of who you are now than who you were 20 years ago. But that's what we're talking about when we say constantly reinvent yourself. Pen to paper helps you constantly be in that space to reevaluate. Get enough sleep. A lot of people don't know that's the only time your body hit, knits itself back together. That's the only time your body has time to heal. So if you're only getting four or five hours of sleep, it's not giving a lot of time for healing. You know, we need at least six to eight hours of sleep for your body to really take time to do its healing process, to renew cells, to get rid of what doesn't work, to repair what needs to be repaired. It takes time. If you ever notice when you're sick, what do you do when you're sick? You sleep right? You find yourself like knocked out the whole time you're sick. Like, and that's because your body knows it needs to shut you down so it can go to work to repair and heal you. So get enough sleep because that's the only way our bodies, mind, body, and spirit are able to heal. Um, get outside and walk it out. Well, Miss Bella has that down to a science, right? We could probably have her do a workshop on how to get out and walk 101, right? And I probably need it, but uh, we're going to save her for another day. But <laughs> at this point, that is still good, connecting with nature. Like, you know, Mr. Spiller has his rock. You know, when you're out, you might pick up another rock while you're out walking. Connecting with nature is important because we are a part of nature. We're all made of stars. And if we're all made of stars, that means we all need to be doing things that connect us back to where we come from. At some point, we don't know where we're going until we know where we've been and who we are right now in this moment. So get out and walk, turn up the music and dance. If you have any rhythm in your heart, I didn't say in your body, in your, in your heart, you know, you just feel certain things that move you in certain ways, turn the music up and dance like nobody's watching. If they're watching, tell them to join in with you, you know, make it fun. We have to have fun in life. Otherwise we find that life can be really a stressful place to be if we don't learn how to laugh and enjoy it. So there we go with laugh. Laugh is huge. Do you know if you laughed a good 15 minutes a day, that would be the equivalent of a 15 minute workout. I mean, the 30 minute workout, a 30 minute workout. You could save yourself going to the gym if you laugh hard for 15 minutes. Find somebody that makes you laugh. Everybody needs a great comedian in their life. Find that person that is your health and wellness cure of a 30 minute workout and laugh really hard for 15 minutes a day, okay? Uh, and the last one, unplug. Don't be afraid to turn that phone off or that computer off or that TV off and just lay and be still. Just let stillness speak and allow your mind to just meditate. You know, we always talk about prayer is when you talk, meditation is when you listen. Sometimes we need to be still, be quiet, and just listen. And meditation is a way for you to listen instead of always feeling like you have to talk. You know, we talk to people every day. We talk all the time. Even when we pray, we talk. Meditation is the time when you get to listen. Next slide. So these are the apps I talked about. Um, Calm, Headspace, Mood Meter. Abide is one if you are really into like um, religious, uh, like Christian principles. Uh, Abide, they, they have incorporated a way to like put in um, not only music, but scriptures and, you know, like little daily devotions and prayers. So you can utilize these apps on your phone. Most of them all have a free space for it, right? Of course, you can pay and upgrade and all of that, but they all have free moments that they can be utilized. And they are tremendous at helping you be able to connect to a meditative space where you can listen again, or just where stillness can speak, or where you can be in touch and aware of where you are mood-wise. Self-care. What works for you? I want to ask all of you to just think of one thing you are willing to try that's new that you haven't done before that we talked about tonight. It could be something that someone else talked about, something you thought about, something I've shared, 
one thing you would be willing to try over the next seven days until we meet again next week. I said, I, I'm gonna think about actually taking a walk like Miss Bella. I'm not gonna walk to work though, that'd be too far. But I, <laughs> I live in U City, so walking all the way down here in the city might not work for you, it might not make it. So <laughs> I will take baby, a walk though. <laughs> baby steps, you have to start small. That's small, I'm gonna be real small, like at the gym around the track a couple times. Yes. But I will take a walk. <laughs> you have to start small. <laughs> Um, I like about I like the the rock and the crystals. I'll probably um, try to get me one, or one of those bracelets that you can put around and you can something to touch. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna check in with you next week to see if you do it. Okay. 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 So so next week is our spring break. Oh, oh yeah. not next week. Week after next then. So you yeah, got two yeah. weeks. That's even better. Yeah. Two weeks same so, as cash. <laughs> yeah. No, we, so we're on spring my break. Daughter, my daughter has crystals and she has stuff that I can I can borrow or or yeah, I can take or um, yeah, I can okay. probably take it and she probably won't notice. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Yeah. yeah. I think uh I'm gonna I know what I need to do. Uh I, I have done it before. I just I just need to exercise. Just okay. exercise. COVID okay. has not been nice. Um, and I think a new component of that for me um, would be to do yoga as part of that without. So I've done yoga, but I've always I'm like judging myself. So I guess mindfully do no, yoga without judgment. judgment. Yeah. yeah. Without judgment. Without judgment eyes. Yeah. 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 Enjoy the journey without judgment eyes. And, yeah. and yoga is really the practice of flexibility. Yes. And I know in your work, you're flexible all the time. So yeah. yoga is just another form of you extending flexibility through yeah, movement. Definitely. That's all. Okay, Ted, what you gonna do? Ted's over there listening to Doc Winters. <laughs> hey, I wish I'm over here, I'm over here uh, trying to get my son from tearing up the house. Uh, well, you definitely got to come up with something. No, oh, yeah. I'm trying to find time to find self care. She said, What I plan on doing? I'm uh -huh. with Gary, man. I'm, COVID has not been nice to me. And every time I think I'm going to try to get to the gym, like my options are time wise have shrank. Cause I, you know, I have work, and then I gotta take my son to the daycare. So I'm like, oh yeah, I can do it in the morning. And then I'm like, yeah, but that's like six in the morning. I don't even go to bed <laughs> in the in in enough time to feel comfortable going to to the gym at six in the morning. That's, those are just wishful thinking. You know? <laughs> okay, gotcha. We gonna try. We gonna try exercise. We got two weeks, Ted. We got two weeks. So hey, what, two weeks for what? Till till what? <laughs> Easter. <laughs> To get one to one time to exercise and one time in oh. two weeks. <laughs> hey, I might be able to squeeze something in on the weekend. Like if, my, <laughs> okay. if I can get my wife, if I can get my wife to watch him for like an hour or something, I might be able to. I might okay. be able to do something. <laughs> okay, we just want we'll you see. to try to throw one in if you can, just one. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, can I? If I think about working out, does that count? Like if I just <laughs> that don't count, Ted. <laughs> okay. But, but I, think it's a lot, though. I think it could be uh, meditative, though. That could be a good yeah, meditation. Maybe. Ted, remember, remember what she said. You know about laughing. Oh, you that's all. I, that's all I can do. I just I laugh in my misery. I laugh at where I'm at right now. I'm like, how did I get here? Like my. I get my exercise and my biceps from lifting my sandwich from the table to my mouth. That's that. <laughs> or, or Ted, what you could do is have one of your friends that really make you laugh hard, make you laugh hard for fifteen minutes, and that would be the equivalent of a thirty-minute workout. Oh yeah, I saw that. I try. You know, I do have a. You know, I got a friend that's a professional comedian, and I follow. Oh. And he'll be like, well, you know, I get paid for my sets. And I'm like, well, that's a joke right there. Hi. <laughs> so, we all, so we all need a little bit of your friend then so we can laugh hard. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, we can put a pool of money together and see what we can do. <laughs> I think we've been doing pretty good tonight making each other laugh. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next slide. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. 
So just making time for yourself. So here's a little clock that gives you a whole bunch of things that you can do. You can uh, do in two minutes. You can give someone you know a compliment. That's a beautiful one. I think what you put into the world, you know, the seeds you plant are the seeds that grow, right? And all of us need encouragement. And so compliments to me are encouragement. Um, they're flowers being planted in my eyes. And so, or look at a photo of someone you love, take a few deep breaths, um, spend time with a pet if you have one, or just pet somebody else's pet that's nice, you know, if you don't want to own one yourself, uh, or have a daydream. Shoot, we all can do a daydream, right? Uh, in five minutes, you have, you can um, have a healthy snack, listen to music, check in on a family member and some friends, massage your head or your hands, or sing out loud, or chat with a coworker. That's a good one, too. Um, and then in 10 minutes, write in a journal, um, you know, read something for pleasure, dance it out. Uh, watch a sunset or a sunrise. I think I really love doing that, especially when the weather changes. Um, or even just, you know, take some, take some time in a quiet spot. Let stillness speak for you, you know. In 30 minutes, you know, you can uh, cook a meal from scratch. I don't know what meal that is. And this is just a grilled cheese. But uh, <laughs> you can cook a meal from scratch. You can write out some of your goals. You can eat lunch with a coworker. That one's a doable one. Uh, or discuss self-care with a colleague. So what you've learned tonight, share with somebody. You know, if they didn't make it out tonight, share with them how important their health and wellness is and that you're concerned about them because you see that they work really hard too. And, you know, I just want you to take time to take care of you. You know, so share the word with somebody. Something you learned tonight, please share it. You know, next slide. Okay, remember to complete your evaluation. We are at the end of our session tonight. Um, you know, I would love for you to complete your evaluation, share what you thought you really enjoyed or, um, you know, what you felt could be a little bit stronger or, you know, just all, all um, I guess, information is always helpful for sure. So uh, I think uh, you're going to put it in the chat? Is that what you're going to Yeah, do? I have to stop sharing the screen okay. in order to, to grab okay. it, and then I'll put it in the chat. Okay, so. well, I think that's it. <laughs> that's all we got. And those are some numbers. If you want to take a picture with your phone or write them down, uh, if you come across people that may need support, um, there's the crisis help line, there's STL, Behavior Health Response, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and National Domestic Violence Hotline as well as the vet veterans crisis line. So remember, remember to take care of you, but if you know someone else that needs support, these numbers are also very viable for a family or friend that may need it as well. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything, here's our website information for Alive and Well, but just curious, you know, what do you think? You know, does, is there anything that you think you can share with anything, anybody um, in the next week or so that may be supportive? I think, um, you know, just the, the constant reminder, um, you know, I, I know with our team, we talk about self-care a lot. Um, we uh, don't always practice what we preach, right? Um, so I think over the next week will be tough since we're going to be gone. But when we get back, it's that anchoring, you know, um, I can model it better. Uh, and then really on check-in, just really check in. Um, not just do a quick survey, you know, how are we doing, how are we showing up, but really digging in, like, what are we doing for self-care right now? Um, and how can I help support you, you know, in that effort or endeavor? So I think that, that that's probably my biggest takeaway um, is really practicing what we preach and really checking in on everybody, uh, just make sure they're doing it as well. That's right, excellent. <clears throat> Ms. Bella, what about you? Um, I have been, I guess I, I, I'm going to work on getting the crystal and keeping it close by or um, a, a bracelet. I have to work on that because um, I've been doing, ever since I have my daughter, um, I've been doing getting up early and getting time for me 
before she was up and before I got her ready to go to school. And um, in about like the past seven years or, or a bit more, no, when she was in middle school, she graduated last year. That's when I started reading the Bible and feeding my soul with the word. And that's what I've been doing. So um, now I listen to the music in the mornings. I wake up with Joy FM. Um, I really don't watch TV that much. So um, I guess um, I have to practice most on, on taking the spiritual bath. And I have to get uh, some Epsom salts. You remind me. Thank you for the reminder. I need to buy me some more Epsom salt. Well, that's what I do on Saturdays. I do my spiritual bath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's something that I really enjoy. Right. And just remember, when you let the water go down the drain, that's where all of your troubles and cares go to. It's going away. That's, that's going away. You're getting rid of it just that way. Yeah, that's good to, to know. Yeah, I never thought about it that way, but that, mm. I like that. Yeah. You have just like washed that. all of your troubles away. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's di putting different perspectives and different uh, words and using different things to get, yeah. Yeah, you just wish it goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, God, for taking that one away from me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Those are gone and good riddance. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you both so much yeah. for being on here today. I mean, I appreciate even in the space. I think two people are as equally important as 2,000 people. So, right. you know, you are here and that's who is supposed to be here. And right. so and hopefully you yeah. will take exactly what you've learned to share with somebody else and helps inspire their spirit and their soul some more. Uh -huh. right. well, thank you again, Chris. And thank you're more than welcome. Much. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. <laughs> Looking forward to next week on that Together We Triumph. So, yeah. So thank yeah. you again. You're welcome. Have right. a wonderful rest of the day. And even, don't forget to do your survey, please. Got it. No, I got yeah. it right here to do it. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Ted. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Ted. Thank you so much. No worries. Everybody have a good one. See you next